And that's why I tell people, man, this racism thing is whack. You know, it's the oldest trick in the book. Divide them based upon what they see differently of each other. Be very careful and be observant in this day. They want a divided country. You divide and conquer. <clears throat> so why do you think certain things are happening right now? Because they want racism to be the, for the forefront of separation. That's why I say the Bible is clear on distinctions. He said you don't wrestle against flesh and blood. You wrestle against principalities and spirits. And so when you understand that, you know for a fact that they're trying to use skin color. I'm like, it doesn't matter if a white man calls me the N-word. It don't change that I'm a king in this thing, right? It don't change my perspective. If a person who has a lot of degrees try to challenge, I don't care because I know who I am. Confidence do not be in skin color. It's based upon the color of blood that was shed for your life. When you know that you were blood bought and that color means more than the skin of your own color, then you don't get into these racial debates and racial divides. You continue to do what he said, which is to love. And love bears all, meaning that it doesn't like that's why I tell people, man, I can't be racist. I went to Cramerton Christian, which was 90 something percent white. I was one of the few, maybe four or five black people in the whole school. But when my mom couldn't pick me up because I went to Cramerton, that's by Gastonia. You know, they they the two family, the Reed, the Reed family and the Barker family took me in their homes. I tasted real bacon for the first time as a kid. I didn't have ketchup on my spaghetti. I had Prego. I was like, what is Prego? It just was good. So I, would, I can't be racist because if we get like that, we won't show love to people who are not even racist. When it comes to just being loving, you can say, you know what? Listen, I had a person flip me off the other day and said, F you in, white dude. I want to pull that Durango and fall that dude over. But I said, you know what? Am I that? He the one with the problem. But if we don't make a habit of being loving, then when those situations come, we'll be affected by what happens. That's why I say, man, watch out how this thing plays. This country has been, is, is getting close to being as divided as it ever been over racism. The church should not be arguing about it. These people who talk online about the black church this and the reformed church that, it's like you getting caught up in dialogue versus your assignment. When you get lost in dialogue, you're distracted from doing what you're supposed to. Why are we arguing about something that was defeated on the cross? So if it's been defeated on the cross, I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna live cross-like instead of being caught up on skin color. When we do that, man, we won't get caught up in these divisive, people tweet, but they ain't gonna do nothing. Text, but don't do nothing. Talk, but don't do nothing. I rather, that's what people was asking me, why you ain't saying nothing about Donald Trump? Why you haven't said nothing about the Muslim ban? Why haven't you said anything about his difference? Because that's not the kingdom I'm supposed to advance. Why am I going to talk about who God allowed to be president? Who God allowed this to happen? Why do I get caught up on going across lines and talking like that? I got kids to reach. I got to go to school tomorrow. We got to reach some kids in the morning. I don't got time. Because if God is my king, I don't have to worry about who's president, who's not president. Because I know for a fact he runs this thing and he's the king of kings. The Lord of Lords. So I don't care who's in the White House, who's from the Patriots going to show up, what Steph Curry said about him, what uh, Under Armour. I don't care what they got to say. I know that my God is alive and well, and he runs this thing. Last table, and we get you out of here. Well. <laughs>